Okay, after learning those expressions about time and completing an exercise, it's time for us to do some listening exercise to prepare for the TED Talk next week. I would like you to follow these steps on the screen. First, pause the video lecture. Go to Tron class, find the chapter time, and under that chapter, click on audio files. Download time listening. Turn to page 18. Play that audio file to help you complete activity 8. Once you're done with the following four steps, go back to the video to check the answers and continue the lecture. Please do them. Okay, I assume you did what I asked you to do. Now let's take a look at what these eight people share with us. Speaker 1. It says there's no point worrying about things that haven't happened yet. This is really a good advice. Sometimes if you worry too much, you don't get things done. Second speaker, don't accept anything without first thinking about it and questioning it. This is exactly the spirit of critical thinking. You always need to put a thing or whatever you learn in your life into perspective. Don't take everything for granted. Speaker 3. You are going to say, I wish I had taken better care of myself. So here, the grammar is the third conditional, right? Unreal in the past. I wish I had. So, it means this person didn't take good care of himself. Speaker 4. Don't wake up and realize you haven't done the things you dream of doing. So what does it mean? It means you need to pursue your dream immediately. Don't wait. Speaker 5. Don't hold on to material objects. Hold on to time and experiences instead. This is another good, ex good advice. Speaker 6. If only someone had told me earlier not to prioritize work over family. Prioritize means to put things into the right order. So to prioritize work over family, it means you think your work is more important than your family. Again, we see a third conditional clause here. Had told me earlier, which means Nobody told him that earlier. Next one, brush your teeth regularly. Okay, this is something we should do every day. And finally, my advice is take your own advice. Sometimes we ignore what our heart and mind tells us, and we want to hear from other people. But in fact, we know the answers, so we do need to pay more attention to our mind. Sometimes you have the answers already, you just need to listen. Okay, I hope you have learned a great deal from these valuable suggestions. Now we need to move on to the next activity. Before we move into the new reading, two terms you need to know latitude and longitude latitude in chinese is what we call wei du so latitude helps us know where we are are we in the north or how far are we in the south and longitude help us to know which time zone we are in so jing du Latitude, longitude, these two terms are key terms in the reading. Alright, again, 
Please do these steps on the screen. Pause the lecture. Go to Tron class. The chapter on time to download the audio files. This time, download time reading, and listen to the first twenty-seven lines, which is the introduction. And when you listen to this introduction, I want you to identify the background, the problem, and the solution. And once you're done with these steps, come back to the video and check the answers and continue the lecture. Do that now, please. All right. I assume you did what I asked you to do. Now let's read together. For the first twenty-seven lines, if you do pay good attention, you should realize that the section in the brown box is the background. It talks about the GPS system, which stands for Global Positioning System. Now we do have this system to tell us where we are exactly, but in the past people did not have that. Okay, people did not have that. If you take a look at line six. Before the 18th century, sailors could calculate how far north or south they were by measuring the height of the sun in the sky, but they couldn't know their position east or west accurately, because the Earth rotates. Rotates means to go around once every 24 hours. You had to know the exact time in order to navigate well. Navigate is another word you need to know. Navigate means to position. Something or to position where you are. Good timekeeping on land was difficult and almost impossible. At sea, time and again, ship got lost or crashed against the rocks, and thousands of sailors died each year. Without the GPS system, people die or got lost. So it is really a blessing to have. The global positioning system now, and from line fifteen on, you will know the problem of this article, which is the longitude problem. Okay, cannot tell time to navigate well. So let's take a look at line fifteen. In seventeen o seven, four ships were lost and fifteen hundred sailors died when ships from the British Navy ran into rocks after getting lost in fog. Although this was a terrible tragedy, it was a common story in the 18th century. So this was quite common in the 18th century. People did get lost on the sea because there was no way for ships to navigate accurately. So again, ac navigate means to tell where someone is or something is. In 1714, a prize of 20,000 pounds. About 3.6 million today was promised to anyone who could solve the longitude problem. So, in 1714, they named the problem the longitude problem because they couldn't tell where they are. Okay, and a group of experts, okay, created a board called the Board of Longitude to judge proposal, which had to be accurate to. Within about 15 kilometers or 31 miles, It included important politicians, scientists who all believed the answer would be found in the stars. So their solution to the longitude problem was to establish the board of longitude. They accepted different plans from normal people, and in this board, on this board, they had. Politician and scientist to tell whether this plan worked or not. Okay, so now we know the background is a time where there was no GPS, and without GPS, there was a longitude problem, and this problem made people die or get lost on the sea. And the solution was to. Choose the right proposal on the board of the longitude. All right, now let's move on. Again, 
Now I would like you to do the same steps. Go back to the audio file and listen to uh, line 27 all the way to 39. Okay, I will fix the line, num line numbers here. Please do that. All right, I assume you did what I asked you to do. Now let's take a look at line 28 to 39. After reading it, you should know the main idea for this paragraph is John Harrison. Okay. Meanwhile, in the north of England, miles from the center of politics and science, the son of a carpenter. Carpenter. A carpenter is a person who carved woods to make furniture. Was learning how to build clocks. By the time he was 20, John Harrison had built his first pendulum clock. So a pendulum clock is a bar with weight at one end that moves from side to side to keep a clock working. If you take a look at the bottom of page 121, you will see the definition for pendulum. And it wasn't long before he was building some of the most accurate clocks in the world. But Harrison knew that pendulum didn't work on a moving ship, and he wanted to win the longitude prize. So first thing we know is Harrison created the pendulum clock, but the pendulum clock was not enough to solve the problem, and he wanted to win the longitude prize. So what did he do in the end? Over the next 30 years, he invented mechanisms that allow clocks to keep the correct time, no matter how the sea was moving or how the temperature changed. If you take a look at the bottom of page 121 again, you will see the definition for mechanism. Mechanism means parts of a machine. Okay. So two inventions from Harrison, the pendulum clock and mechanism. To help you have a better idea of Harrison's inventions, here is the image of a pendulum clock. And here is the mechanisms in the clock. Okay, so a mechanism clock will be what we call 机械表 in Chinese. And for your information, on Tron class, there is a link to a video that introduces the Board of Longitude okay, to you. If you want to learn more, do take a look at it. Okay, do take a look at it. Okay, that's it for the reading this week.